I think I found the secret to cheap, cheap wargaming. 2D minis. As you can see, I am finally back home in Japan. Here with my hobby desk, my tools, my paints, and of course, my 3D printer. I am super excited to get back into making 3D models and more terrain for my game Spire Seas. But while I was traveling and on a very tight budget, I couldn't help but think to myself, what is the cheapest, quickest, most portable way to play a tabletop war game? Here's my solution. 2D minis. Okay, okay, I know. They're just not as cool as a 3D model with detail, paint, terrain, bits, and all that stuff. But hear me out. Unless you already have a 3D printer and a huge collection of bits for bashing, making a whole new team for a whole new war game in a unique setting like mine is a pretty daunting task. Especially for people who are new to this hobby and maybe haven't even tried kit bashing before. Here on Deluvian Chronicles, I am all about trying to make the hobby of wargaming more appealing and accessible to newcomers. And I think it's important for those newcomers to realize that you don't need a fancy table full of expensive equipment to get started. So why not start with a table full of little paper dudes? And even if you are experienced with building for the tabletop, it's just a simple way to build out a new crew or test out some new models for a new game. Plus it's super portable. So let me show you how it's done. First, I laid out some simple boxes about an inch wide that could be folded in half with a little tab left over on each end. Then I drew up a few different designs, trying to include a nice mix of body types, poses, and gear. I thought briefly about redrawing the backs of each of the models, but decided against it. It's just easier to copy, paste, and invert, and you're done. Now, for my game Spire Seas, you'll also need a ship, so I included one of those as well. I whipped up a simple little design that I thought fit well into the aesthetic of the world that I'm building. This one here would be a medium-sized vessel, according to the rules, but I'll probably include options for larger and smaller vehicles in the future. Plus, I added some little ship upgrades that you can use to test out the new rules found in the latest version, Alpha 2. I decided to leave these minis black and white so that players could customize them with just a few colored pencils. This is especially useful if two players want to use the same miniature for their crews. Then, once I had my sheet printed, which only cost about 10 yen at the local convenience store, I went ahead and got to work customizing. I picked my five favorite models and colored them in with a simple mix of grays and muted browns. Nothing fancy. Still, this really helped to bring these drawings to life, especially the ship. With my crew all decked out, I moved on to cutting. The square shape means that I only need to make a few cuts per miniature, and all of them with a hobby knife and a ruler. The paper minis that I've seen online tend to have these detailed outlines, and you could go in and try to cut that all out, but I don't really see the point. These are meant to be a quick alternative to a full 3D model, and I'd rather spend all of that time on something more productive. So I left my minis square. Plus, it makes them much more readable from a distance. And I would be good, except there's one major flaw. That is, their paper. One errant breath and whoosh, gone. So I went ahead and stuck them to some nice hefty bases. In this case, I used US quarters, which conveniently are almost exactly 25 millimeters in diameter. I used some simple masking tape, stuck that to the inside tabs and stuck those to the quarter. Finished. This adds a nice weight to them, which feels great to move around on the table and hey, no blowing around in the lightest breeze. The ship was a little more tricky. I couldn't just slap some quarters on it without it looking really weird. But in the end, all I needed was a little bit of thick cardstock, which I had lying around, 
and a glue stick. It's not quite as stable as the coins, but it's enough to keep it down on the table. Plus, any models on board will help weigh it down. Added bonus, you can do these sweet little boat spins. And there it is, all set and ready for battle. Add a second crew and some filled in character sheets and you're ready to play. Oh, and if you don't have terrain already made up, just throw down some books and call it good. That's it. The pencils, glue, tape, and even the hobby knife all came from the dollar store, or in my case, the 100 yen shop. And the quarters, which are definitely the most expensive part of this whole project, only added up to about 250. That means you can be up and gaming for under $10 if you use quarters. I'm sure there's something even cheaper. Now, I'm all about kit bashing, printing, and hobbying up some sweet terrain and cool characters. And now that I'm back home in my studio, I'm really stoked to get back to it. But let's be honest, you don't really need any of that stuff to play. If time and money are what are stopping you from enjoying this really fun hobby, well, try out some 2D minis. You can find links to the minis, the crew sheet, and even the rules down below. I even included a blank sheet in case you want to try drawing your own crew and ship. All I ask is that you let me know what you think in the comments. Any feedback is appreciated. And if you like the game and want to help out more, then you can join our playtest over on Discord. Or just let me know what you think on Instagram or Twitter. And of course, like and subscribe if you want to see more of the world that I'm building here on YouTube. That's it for today, so happy hobbying everyone, and I look forward to seeing you soon out there on the waves.